All right, welcome everybody. Today we have my friend David as a guest. David is an upcoming um, cobbler, and he's here giving me a hand, and and, um, and he brought me some coffee, so we're going to have coffee today. Do the honors, David. All right. Why don't you go ahead and oh, put right. half, half of the cup here, yeah. and then here, and then go back to you. Okay. So we got, we got, David brought us some coffee from, this is called the Tea Lady. And they are in New Jersey. The Rockaway Town Square Mall. Now they do have a, they do have a website. What is that website, David? This is too small here. Maybe I can see it here. Uh, okay. Oh boy. Nadia. Uh, Something Nadia the tea lady? Yes. Nadia, I'll I'll post that, you know, on right there. I'll post it, and and you guys can have it checked out. This she's called the tea lady. So, so it is a. I don't know what blend it is. What what did Nye. she say? Nye the tea lady. Okay, I'll, I'll post the um, I'll post the what you call. I don't remember. Um, it just says organic Armenian coffee. Well, that that's all we need to know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. All right. I like it. It's like it was made in a Bialetti. It's Bialetti. not too bad. Bialetti, uh, this is the Italian uh, type of... I think it went over some people's heads. Yeah, that's all right. Sam will know. Sam's got a Bialetti. So, David, tell us about yourself. All right, so... Because people want to know who David is because it's usually Chris sitting there. But Chris is so freaking busy, he doesn't have the time for me. Chris is a friend of mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Well. That went over your head? No, I did, yeah, I don't know who Chris is, but I wasn't sure if he was uh, no, no. supposed to. No, no, he's uh, okay. All right. All right, um, so me, I, uh, I've been doing tree work, or I did tree work for 27 years, and then I moved on to doing wildlife management. And uh, I'm 55 now, I'm not sure. I decided a few years ago that I, I needed to reinvent myself again, because I wasn't sure how long I was gonna wanna be rappelling off of roofs to evict bat colonies, or go uh, and trudging through um, water to do beaver trapping and muskrats and whatnot. So anyhow, um, I decided my great grandfather was a cobbler. And that's what he did when he emigrated from Italy and uh, moved to Lodi, New Jersey. And so, anyway, I started thinking about it and started doing some research. And this was right before the virus hit. And um, can I say pandemic? Eh. Anyway, Our, so my channel is kind of neutral. Okay. We don't want to. We don't. In flame. <laughs> we don't we don't talk about politics, even no. though everybody has their own beliefs. But we kind of stick to shoes, oh gosh, leather, jackets, and stuff like yeah. that. So, so I started buying equipment. I got um, a, uh, the entire contents of a shop that was in the New York City subway. Um, I bought that right in it was uh, May of uh, two thousand and twenty. Two thousand and twenty. 20. 20, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, I was like the only person in Brooklyn <coughs> without a mask. And um, then since then, there were a couple other places that uh, were close to me, and I managed to get my hands on uh, equipment. Yeah, started... It seemed like there were a lot of shops closing down then mm -hmm. because of all this mess was going around. So perfect time, perfect time to buy equipment. Yeah, right? yeah. And uh, so I started uh, making, basically making love to uh, my 12Ks. Um, watching that one video from that's on YouTube from, um, oh gosh, I can't remember that guy. There's one video, it's about how, about the land is 12K, but anyway, yeah, how to clean it. People don't know what the 12K is. It's, it, a, it's an it, outsole, it's an outsole machine. Oh, that's, so we're not, we're on your personal page right no, now? We're no, we're on our business page, but business people page. don't know. Oh, the it's an outsole. Works. It's a sewing machine it's for shoes. Se <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a large sewing machine. There you go, it stitches the soles on the outsole, right. outsoles of shoes. Sorry. That's okay. So, <laughs> like, make a love 12K. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? All right, so dismantling machine, you have to, in order to um, maintain the machines. Whose video is that? 
I can't remember. It, I want to. I don't think I've seen it. It's it's a um, it's very it's easy. This is Steve uh, um, from. Oh gosh, uh, I forgot. His name I before. thought it it was produced by uh, Landis. Okay. Um, it's probably one of the guys in the Midwest there. I forgot his name. It, Steve something. The guy has got like a a. Uh, oh, never mind. Anyway, yeah. we'll find it. Yeah. So, um, Landis, twelve K. Well, okay, Stitcher. So, um, then I, uh, here we go. The Curved Needle Stitcher. Uh, this guy here. Well, oh, yeah, it's going to take it. Where did you start your embroidery business? Oh. I'll have so, to look him up. So, that, that video, he really goes in depth yeah, on Steve Mueller. Yeah, yeah. Is that his name? Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's a, he's a whiz on those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so then I, I started just acquiring equipment and um I like to buy two of everything just to have one on, on backup. Well you, you know? never know. Yeah. And so then uh I've just uh, periodically would uh search um you know Facebook marketplace, eBay, see what's available. And uh I managed to get some really unique stuff. And and it's again it's this is equipment well and, and material too I've got lots of materials, um, so now it was a matter of learning to use it and so you know I would go to uh, Alan, you know, the other uh, cobbler's websites on YouTube right. and yours Alan's um, trying to think of who else that was really prominent. Oh, those two guys down in no, Nashville. No, yeah. Yeah, Trenton Heath. Otter, they're, Otter and Sons. Yeah, they're good guys. And um, so then it was just a matter of, um, well, I started, I bought this one machine and Steve, I uh, joined, oh, so Jim Novel, Navel, Navel. From, um, from Shoe Systems Plus in uh, Goshen, he recommended that I join SRI. Right. SRI and, is a... Um, is a um, is our Facebook group page for cobblers and craftspeople, and uh, basically, we just share you know each other's stories. It is a so. wealth of knowledge, you know, and it was it's every day. There guys are showing not just what they did, but like Steve shows how he did it in great detail, you know, and that it has really been in, an indispensable resource to um, for learning, but. You know, long story short, Steve was helping me uh, figure things <clears throat> out when I was at this other shoe repair business, getting some more equipment, and um, then he he offered graciously offered for me to come down last year and spend some time. Uh, I was going to spend only a week, but a week turned into three weeks. Three weeks, yeah. Three weeks. <clears throat> and that hotel I see is completely gutted across the street. Yeah, over they stayed across the street, <laughs> but that's that's the going. Place, they're rebuilding. The place was bad. <laughs> It needed re re to be rebuilt. I'm glad they tore it down. To yeah, it. it was pretty bad. It was an expensive motel, let's call it. It was a place to hang your hat. That was exactly. It. And so uh, now, um, now what I've done is uh, converted my what was just a concrete block garage with uh, it. It was probably eighty years old, and I have converted it into a heated, insulated drywall ceiling suspended ceiling workspace and yeah, it turns it's, it's, it's nice actually uh, it's, it's good to have i'm so you know. thankful yeah so you're going to start doing things out of the garage yeah yeah okay. i mean I, I i've always said like even when it, all of my businesses my tree service you know i had to rent a spot mm -hmm. when to keep my crane and my chippers wood, the, the stump grinders and all that stuff and you know but i, I always swore that i would never I would always do what I could to avoid having a brick and mortar, an right. actual brick and mortar business. This is this is very difficult to to do to have the brick and mortar business because there's so much involved in in not just having a shop but everything else, administrative works, for example. Not just you're you're an employee and you're in management at the same time, and it's very difficult to run both of them at 100. percent Sometimes one is going to lack, you know. So well. Only I, it's like when I was flying, I stopped flying I, when I was a student pilot. I said I was never going to take another flying lesson again until I bought my own airplane because I didn't want to keep renting. You know, if I bought, if I owned the building that I was in, or right. I, you know, it was my building and I was, 
and had a mortgage on it, then that'd be one thing. But, you know, it, to <clears throat> when you do the math on how much you'd have to turn over in order just to maintain the overhead yep. is very intimidating. Exactly. And most people don't understand what it's like running any business at all, let alone, you know, like my current business and my tree service, they were run from the end table at the side of my couch and my, my laptop. I mean, writing a check at the end of the month for rent, it's the, just the tip of the iceberg when you're running a business. There are so many, so many things involved. Like money out the door, oh, yeah, off the top, yep. workers' compensation. Yep. That's money you will, it's gone. You know, you, you hope that you'll never use it. And well, in, in Virginia, you have to have more than two employees in order to need workers' comp. So I only have one right now, so I don't have good. I don't have work work in the comp employee, whatever the hell that is. And, workers' know. compensation. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's the, there's so many little details involved, you know. Mm -hmm. So I remember when David called me one time. He's um, when I first met him. He's like, you know, I want to I want to be able to learn, but nobody's giving me a chance to come down and and work with them to kind of to learn what how to basic shoe repair. I'm like, you can come visit me, you know? So you were like, what? I'm like, yeah, if you want to come, my door's always open, you know? So, and that's how, that's how you came last that's year, right? How, that's how it happened. Yeah, yeah. I, I had actually, um, I was gonna go work, uh, mm -hmm. learn from somebody in the New Jersey, Philadelphia area. And I was, uh, by a couple people, dissuaded from doing so. And so it just so happened that uh, with that person, um, and it just so happened that Steve and I had were on the phone, we were talking, and he made this very generous offer to uh, teach me. And I it mean, was not every, not every, not every shop has. I shouldn't say the time, but maybe the patience to have somebody come in. They, they just don't. They don't want to be. They don't want to waste their time teaching somebody. And then, and then they're the person who's taught. They're going to leave and do whatever they want to do. Some people yeah. don't want to help people like that, you know. And, and that's is, which is a shame. That's too bad. Yeah, I, and that's where you know I actually offered to to pay Steve for his time, and he graciously refused. Yeah, I, I was and, like, "What do you mean, pay me?" I'm like, "There's nothing that I'd be doing more than what I'm doing now. You're just kind of hanging around and absorbing what I'm doing, you know." So. Well, yeah, there's always... Wait, wait, he did have to buy me lunch the one time. I said, I can't have that. You can't, you're not going to work for free. You're going to feed me at least. Yeah, and that was when I... I well, what do you call that uh, Egyptian stuff? The rice that's upside down? Oh, Tadik. It's not it's Egyptian. It's it's um, Iranian. Oh, oh, that's right. The the person I knew. Yeah, her, Persian. Her, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, I'm eating this stuff. Tad, tad, I, I broke my tooth. We were sitting right here at this table. I broke my, I'm eating this. It's, it was hard as a rock. I bit into it and I broke my tooth. And I'm like, oh, for the rest of the time, I'm like, oh my God. I had the sharp edges. So but it, it's rice. For those people who don't know, they cook rice in the bottom of the pan. They burn that and then they turn it upside down. It's kind of nice and burned rice. It's really good to have, to have yogurt sauce with it, you know, so. It was good. Really good. Good stuff. You should check it out. But um, so, you know, with the uh, with learning this craft, um, it's difficult because uh, most people, uh, I, the two people that I did discuss, discuss this with up in New Jersey, they basically wanted me to, uh, they would train me as long as I was going to. And they said the words, the functional words were take over their business. And what they meant by that wasn't take, oh, here, how's my business and operate it for me. No, you can buy my business buy and, the, and everything and my Red Wing dealership. And I'm like, I don't have that kind of money, you know? Wait, that's what I was hoping you would do with mine. Oh, I'll, yeah. <laughs> and you see, and that's, that's just it. As, <laughs> after having, you know, to your point oh about, about having employees or training people, you know, this is a this is a, a unique situation because it's my my objective is to run my own shop, <clears throat> and you know, I I can only offer so much help. You know, at this at my skill set right now, my skill set is way down here. Well, wait, you so, did you did stitch on an outsole stitcher the first time you were here, I which did. that requires <laughs> a great skill. You know, there's a lot of people who who've been in this industry for many, many years and still not are able to stitch on that machine. 
It's a big, big, it's a big, monstrous, very intimidating machine. And we got him stitching on it the first I, it time did. he was here. It, so. it worked. And it was, I, it was these boots. These were the boots. Oh, we, we one did, of the we did one of the two pairs of boots that I did. Yeah, yeah. And so when you when you own a business and you bring in a ground floor employee and you train them <clears throat> to climb trees, for instance, and they're there for three months and as a, start off as a ground person, and then they go on to climbing after six months, and then before you know it. They they want to start their own business, yep. you know, and now your employee is out the door. His parents gave him, you know, all the equipment they needed, yep. and now you've got not just you've trained your competitor. Now we live uh, 200, 250 miles apart, you know, but um, I'm in I'm in I don't. But it's not like you, you're well established. It's yeah, not going to you know. But we had the, on that note, we had you know Noah that was working for me. He was here a year and a half. And, um, and I trained him very well. He was doing very good. And um, it turned out, as it turned out, that his former employee employer had little health issues, and he was going to basically sell the business. And he asked Noah if you want to come take over the business. And I told Noah, I said, "Hey, man, you got to do what's best for you. You know, it's okay. You know, go do what you got to do." So Noah was about forty-five minutes from here, so he's running his own shop. So on that note, exactly, you train somebody and they leave to do their own thing. But you know, look, you can't, what are you going to do? You know, it's a crapshoot in this industry, in any industry. When you teach somebody the business, they want to, you know, venture off on their own. You wish them luck and, and you know, and that's it, you know, so no hard feelings. Yeah. As long as they don't backstab you, you know, then, then it's okay, you know, so it does happen, unfortunately. Yeah. But you're getting better slowly. And, and you're back here for a couple of days. Yeah. And, you know, I really want to learn to sew, too. You know, that's another thing. The uh, What kind of sewing? Well. On shoes? Or on, on the shoes. Okay. Yeah. Like patching machine sewing? Pa that type of thing. This is a patching machine, by the way. This is just for display, but I have one on the back that we use. That's what you call a patching machine. Okay. Yeah. We'll get to it. And, um, and then... Uh, when I first came here, I tell you, well, who was it? Oh, Blaze said that when Sandra offered for me to go down to or up to Delaware mm -hmm. and spend some time at her place, Blaze said, you know, I really don't think you would do. Uh, you're not at the point now where you should be in a high volume shop. Your head's going to be spinning. And yeah, they, they, Sandra is our, our, our friend and um, she has a shop in the mall. And having a shop in a mall is totally different than having a business like this here. The mall is very, very, like you said, high traffic and fast volume turnaround. Like, you know, while you wait stuff, smaller jobs, bigger jobs, they want to do things and get it out fast. And we just, that, that, I just don't do that. Yeah. So that's why he said, Blay said you won't fit in. Well, he said it, so. I wouldn't learn much. I'd be so, and, and that's where, where I was going. Like even here, coming here, I mean, it was last February. We got walloped with close to three feet of snow. I couldn't do any work, so I went staying across the street and learning here. But even <clears> still, <throat> when you know you're, it's so much to absorb. You know, you're looking at edge dressings and creams and polishes, and when to use a polish and the the solvents and glues and you know sometimes you're you're putting the uh the cement and it has to go under the heat lamp and certain cements don't work with this type of material and you have to put the mm -hmm. the, the uh, super glue on and there is so much and then to polish and get use the right polish to match the colors and it's just it was really overwhelming so it's like i've had time for some of that to absorb or for for it to absorb and i think <clears throat> at this point now excuse me i'll be able to now that i'm familiar with all these products and everything because i was taking it, pictures of this stuff it, and it that gets stuff and... easier as you're actually doing it when you think about it you get overwhelmed because there's so much to think about mm -hmm. but as you start doing it everything kind of falls into its own place and you get it done. So it, it takes time. There's but, a huge learning you know, curve. A huge learning curve with this. More than any profession that I've 
been in. Well, we want to we want to thank you for joining us, David. I appreciate I'm it. I'm really excited. And we wish David lots of luck, and uh, it'll be fine. Took a little. I left I left Dubois, Pennsylvania, at six o'clock in a, a nine seater Cessna prop. <laughs> You made, it, you made it, thank God. And it flew into Washington Dulles. It took an hour and a half. It was really cool. Well, I'm glad you came in. Thank you very much, yeah, Steve. Man. Thank you. All right, I want to thank you guys also for showing me lots of love with my other videos um, in regards to, you know, mom passing. And it was, it was, I'm so, I'm so thankful for you guys. I read all the comments and I really appreciate everybody's love that you guys gave. All right, so uh, we'll see you guys again on the next project. Take care.